Hello, I'm Julie from Spellbound and today I'm going to start a short course in making earrings. Now we're going to be making dangly earrings and I hope to be able to show you how to take some ordinary beads and make them spectacular. We'll need some basic ingredients and I've got them in front of me here. I've got some ear fittings. Now I've chosen fish hook ear wires just because I think they suit the style of earring we're making quite well but equally they could be fittings for non-pierced ears or they could be the straight through bar type with a little bead and loop on the front. I've also got some head pins and these are 50 millimeters long. They're half hard so they're relatively stiff which means they'll stay straight and they've got a little head on the end to stop the beads dropping off the bottom. Now those are the two basic things you need to make earrings. In addition, I've brought in some extra materials so that we can ring the changes a little bit. I've got some eye pins, which are the same as the head pins, but instead of the head, they have a loop on the end. And I've got some wire. This is 0.8 millimeter wire and I've chosen a half hard temper which means it's relatively stiff so I can do interesting things with it. And then we've got beads. Now I've chosen a mix from the Spellbound range, this is what we call Cathedral Mix. And I've chosen it because it's got lots of different shapes and some nice toning colours. I'm just going to pick from these pairs of beads and see what we can make. To go with the colours in the Cathedral Mix, I've got two colours of mixed seed beads so I can have a rummage through and see what looks the best. And seed beads are a great way of making ordinary beads look really well thought out and coordinated when you're making earrings. I've also got some little silver balls. These are three millimeter silver rounds and they help to bring the color of the findings into your design. Last but by no means least, we have the tools we need. I've got a pair of wire cutters. I'll use those for trimming the pins and the wire. And I've got a pair of round nose pliers. Now these are cylindrical all the way to the tip and they go to quite a nice fine point. Now I make my loops by wrapping the wire or the end of the pin around this cylindrical portion of the pliers and where I wrap will give me loops of different sizes. Those are the special ones for using to make loops. I've also got a pair of flat snipe nose or chain nose pliers which I sometimes find useful for gripping when I need to use two pairs of pliers. I've had a little look through my mixed beads and I've picked a couple of pairs out that I think would make a nice pair of earrings. I've got some nice bronzy coloured pearls, they're an eight millimeter, and I've got some pale blue faceted washers. I think those together, nice colour combination and a nice size combination too. Now to make the simplest pair of earrings with these beads, all I would really need is a pair of head pins and a pair of ear fittings. I can just put the beads straight onto the pins, make a loop and turn them into a little dangle earring with the ear wire above the beads. But with the addition of a few extra little bits and pieces, we can make an ordinary looking earring into something a bit more stylish. So I've picked out of my seed bead mix, I've got some little gold, size 10 they happen to be, but they go nicely with this bronze and I've picked out a couple of little blue beads that match in with my blue washers. I've also brought forward some silver beads 
so I can perhaps think about bringing the silver metal into the design as well. Right, I'm going to start with a head pin and I always think it's quite nice to start at the bottom of a head pin with a seed bead or a small metal bead because that helps to taper the shape of your bottom part of your dangle. So I've got a head pin with a seed bead on and I'm going to go in with my larger bead. And you can see it tapers it nicely with that silver bead, the, with the seed bead on the bottom. Right, now instead of putting the washer straight on top, I'm going to separate them with one of the silver beads, then the washer. So again, a little bit more design. That's looking better than just pearl and blue bead. And then to finish off, I think I'm going to put another gold bead on top. And then we pick up that bronzy colour again. And also it's easier to make a loop against a smaller bead than a bead with a wide top like the washer. So it's for practical reasons as well as for design reasons. Right, now we're going to need to make a loop. Now I'd like to make a loop tight against this top little bead. So to start with, I need to trim away the excess wire. Now I've got my wire cutters and I'm going to trim to seven to eight millimeters above that top bead. Now it's about the width of your little fingernail, but remember to take your fingernail out the way before you cut. And I'm going to hold on to the end that I'm cutting as well as the beads so it doesn't fly off into the distance. There we go. So now we've got our pin trimmed to seven to eight millimeters above our top bead. Now we need to make a loop. Now there's several ways to make a loop, but I'm going to go with the tip back roll forward method. So the very tips of my round nose pliers against that top bead and I'm going to tip back towards myself. As you can see, it's made an angle of nearly 90 degrees. I'm now going to put my pliers on the very end of the wire. I know I'm on the end because if I rub my finger across the top there, I can hardly feel the end of the wire at all. Now I'm about three to four millimeters in from the end of the pliers and a, the diameter of the pliers there will make a loop that's just about the right size to take up that excess wire there. So I'm going to hold it firm. I've got the pliers closest to me, the beads furthest away and I'm going to roll away from myself with my wrist. I'm going to stop, have a look at how far I've got, not quite there yet. So come back and grip further back on the loop and continue rolling. And that will bring it all the way around to make a round loop on top of my bead selection. Now that is quite a nice little earring. And I could just pop it on an ear fitting. And there we go. One earring finished. But I'd like to add a little bit more length and a little bit more design to it. So I'm just going to take that off. And let's add some more length. Now I can add some more length with an eye pin and if you've not had a lot of practice at doing loops an eye pin is a very good way to add extra length because the loop is already made for you but if you'd like to practice making loops and you want to use up all the resources I would use the trimming from the head pin I'm going to make a loop on the end and this time instead of tipping back first I'm going to do the rolling first. So it's pliers right at the end of the wire. 
I know I'm at the end of the wire because I can't feel when I run my fingers across the top. And again, I'm three to four millimeters in from the end. Now I'm going to hold about seven to eight millimeters down because that's the distance I want to make the loop. If you hold it down here, all of this wire will bend. So you just need to restrict it to the amount of wire you actually want to bend. And I'm going to roll away from myself. Now you can see I've held this hand still and it's the pliers that have moved. If I take the pliers off, it started to go round. So I go from the end of the wire and I'm now going to grip the top of the bend I've already made. My pinch with this hand is in the same place and I'm going to keep on rolling until it comes round to a circle. Now at the moment, the circle is slightly to the side. In fact, what I've got is like a capital P shape. So I'm going to center that one prong of the pliers in the bottom corner, one on the shaft. So I'm gripping right in this bottom corner, finger and thumb right up against and tip back. And there you can see I've now got a nice centered loop very much like you see on the end of the eye pin. Right, let's open this loop so I can join on my ear wire. Now I'm going to put the pliers on at right angles to the main pin and I'm going to twist the loop open so it opens on the top like that. That means I keep my nice round profile. Pop on the loop I've already made Pliers back to the same position, support as close as you can and twist back. And now we've got a bit of a wiggle in our design. Now let's finish off with a few more beads. I'm going to pick up on the blue again and the silver again and the gold again. So I've got a blue seed bead, a silver bead and a gold seed bead and then it's making a loop again. So it's trim, seven to eight millimeters. And we'll do the tip back method first. So I'm going to pop my pliers right against that top bead, tip back to nearly 90 degrees, and then grip three to four millimeters in from the end of the pliers right at the end of the wire and roll. And that's my second loop made. And I've turned two very ordinary looking beads. If I put them back on the pin, you can see how much of an improvement the new design is over the old one. I'm going to add it to the ear fitting. Now the ear fitting is just like a modified eye pin. So you can see here there's the loop at the bottom, the loop at the bottom, and then the rest of the pin is bent into the shape for the ear. So I need to open it in the same way as I opened the loop previously. So it's pliers at right angles to this little spring. Grip as close as I can and just twist to the side. Pop the earring on and twist shut. If I move those out of the way, and there's one I made earlier to make the pair. Now I hope you agree that that's a really nice, elegant pair of earrings made from very basic materials. Next time I'll be introducing wire to show you how to make stamens, dangly earrings, and then we'll go move on to do spirals. Thank you for watching and happy earring making.